and welcome to Help Yourself, a series that answers all your questions about the making of self-help videos, in particular, why does anyone bother? <laughs> I must stress, all the videos in this series are entirely genuine. Sadly, one or two contenders didn't quite make it into tonight's show on the grounds of taste. They weren't quite tasteless enough. <laughs> Such as the highly informative Bagpipe Teacher, uh, previously available <laughs> under the title How to Get Your Neighbours to Move House. <laughs> uh, also failing to make the starting lineup was the intriguingly titled How to Tell if Someone's Lying. <laughs> probably the finest and most interesting piece of film I've ever seen. And if you believe that, you probably need to get hold of a copy. <laughs> and the quite excellent How to Mount a Mountain Lion. <laughs> uh, for the filthy-minded, I must point out that this explains how to take a dead lion, fill it with sawdust and put it on a pedestal before having sex with it. <laughs> this week, we're concentrating on the more extreme end of the market, so prepare yourself for footage that will have you reaching for the sick bag quicker than Victoria Beckham after a Christmas lunch. <laughs> Well, the animal section of self-help videos must be one of the most extreme, uh, certainly in terms of the sanity of its presenters, and there's no better example than this. Speak to my heart, the complete guide to communicating with animals. So ask your dog to put the kettle on, sit back and enjoy. Spirits of the South, join us here today. Hi, I'm Carla Person. I'm an animal communicator and a spiritual healer for animals. I work in a way that's ancient and found across the globe. So within seconds of meeting Carla, you know that she's no fraud. She's 100% pure nutter. Now I'm going to introduce you to your power animal. What I will do is I will um, drum for myself and just go to my place, ask my power animal, to fetch your power animal, and then when, when your power animal enters me, I'll come back into the middle world here, into ordinary reality, and I'll get up and I'll physically blow that power animal into you, and then I'll rattle around you to seal it. Yes, it's as simple as that. Just introduce her to her power animal, fetch her power animal, blow it into her, and rattle around to seal it. We've all been there. It's only a hunch, but I'd say that Carla's power animal is the Mad March Hare. <laughs> and just when you thought it was impossible to find someone idiotic enough to believe Carla Person's rubbish about power animals, here are five more. <laughs> Her power animal is clearly a gorilla who's broken into the vet surgery and eaten the entire supply of horse tranquilizer. <laughs> The whole point of this video, lest we forget, is to teach you how to converse with animals, but what to talk about. What do you like best? <laughs> or least? <laughs> Tell me about significant events in your past. <laughs> How do you feel? <laughs> Where do you hurt? So there we are, speak to my heart, and on the off chance that you couldn't make sense of what Carla or Mrs. Person was saying, the end credits offer one last piece of advice. If anything is unclear, ask your power animal to explain. <laughs> for example, you could ask it questions like, where did I put the receipt for this video? <laughs> well, extreme behaviour seems to crop up in all situations. Most people, for example, associate the art of seduction with chocolates, flowers and romance. But for the extremists, there's a rather more direct route. Every man's fantasy is a gorgeous woman. By their own nature, a woman is a seductive creature. For the majority of women, being seductive is just acting natural. <laughs> Although for men, it isn't as easy. But one common feeling which all men around the world share is the feeling of being frustrated. But not as frustrated as a woman who can't find a bikini top to match the bottoms. <laughs> anyway, let's meet part hypnotist, part seducer, Robert Gould. 
Welcome to Seduction Through Hypnosis, the revolutionary new way of seducing the woman of your dreams. It's immediately obvious why Robert needs to hypnotize women to seduce them. <laughs> and it's also immediately obvious why he's got an enormous book on his lap. <laughs> anyway, how to select your prey, sorry, partner. There are two main qualities that you want to look for in a potential subject. The first is an ability to focus on one thing at a time. The second is willingness. Let's look at some examples. Look for someone who can focus easily on one thing at a time. And someone who's stupid enough to sunbathe in the middle of the road. <laughs> Apparently oblivious to the enormous Harley Davidson <laughs> circling round her. One can only assume that the magazine she's reading is in Braille. <laughs> yes, that old scenario. If I had a pound for every time I saw a biker with a mullet driving round and round a blind woman sunbathing on a road in suburbia, I'd have a pound. <laughs> So what other qualities should one look for in a potential victim? I mean, soulmate. Does she get so involved in a conversation that she doesn't notice someone calling her name? Brenda? Brenda? Brenda, you have a phone call. Didn't you hear me calling you? No, I didn't hear you. <laughs> so blind and deaf. The perfect candidate for hypnotism. But how to pick that candidate from an ordinary everyday group of appallingly bad actresses? Hi, I'm John. Hi, I'm Robin. Hi, Robin. Hi, Brenda. You're? Lisa. What do you do, John? Um, well, I'm working part-time at this uh, publishing house, but I'm studying to be a hypnotherapist. Hypnotism is a crock. Yeah, I don't know about that either. Wow, I've always wanted to be hypnotized. <laughs> so, which do we think he's going to go for? <laughs> the one that's very hostile, the one that's slightly hostile, or the one that's got f*** me now tattooed on her forehead? <laughs> So much for the who, then. What about the where? Bedrooms, living rooms, or office couches are great settings. And it is an especially good idea to disconnect the ringers from phones so they won't be distracting either. And just to be absolutely sure, you might want some strong gaffer tape and a vat of hypnol. <laughs> so once you've found your willing participant, it's time to test out those powers of persuasion. Allow your arms to fall comfortably by your sides and choose an object or spot that you will focus on. Wave after wave of calming energy roll into you. The waves will enter your head. Relaxation will fill your mind. You are hornier than you've ever felt before. Permit me to make love to you. And as I do, you will gradually awaken from this hypnotic state and become aware of the most erotic experience the most satisfying sex of your lifetime. And there, my lad, the case for the defense rests. <laughs> well, that was the first video in the series, the second being how to convince your cellmate that he doesn't want to have sex with you through hypnosis. <laughs> well, the worrying thing is that no matter how extreme all these videos are, they're clearly finding an audience. Indeed, how would you feel if you knew the man across the street was spending an evening viewing this? I'm Michael Janich, author of the book, Blowguns, The Breath of Death. The blowgun is one of the most amazing weapons ever devised by man. It's also one of the few primitive weapons that still has a viable place in today's modern arsenal. Even in its crudest form, the blowgun possesses many of the qualities of the perfect weapon. It's simple to operate, rugged, reliable, versatile, accurate, powerful, deadly, and virtually silent. Yes, this is Michael Janich. He may have no friends, but he does have the most polite neighbors in America. One of the primary tactical advantages of the blowgun is its quietness. With the exception of hand-thrown weapons, no other projectile weapon is as quiet as a blowgun. From distances of more than a few feet, the gun can hardly be heard at all. This makes it ideal for pest control in your backyard, where louder weapons will disturb neighbors. When hunting small game, even if you miss your first shot, the lack of any noise that might spook the animal usually guarantees an opportunity for subsequent shots. I would just like to point out that no squirrels were harmed in the making of this video, apart from that one, which is now Michael's toilet roll holder. <laughs> now, you may think you'd have no need for a blowgun in your life, but you'd be amazed how many ordinary, everyday scenarios cry out for one. For example, let's say that one morning you wake up and, for whatever reason, 
you decide that you have a need to deflate someone's car tire quickly. <laughs> Interesting use of the word need there. Why would you need to deflate someone else's car tire? Let's see how Michael deals with that question by avoiding it altogether. Well, let's say you have this need, and say you have a friend in the medical community or are otherwise resourceful, you can get one of these, a 3cc syringe, as well as one of these, a large size hypodermic needle, in this case a 16 gauge. Load the dart into your blowgun and take aim at that tire. When you shoot into the tire, the hypodermic needle will puncture the sidewall of the tire and quickly allow the air to escape. Yes, there's a potential flaw here you may have spotted. After all, your neighbour discovers that his car tyre has been mysteriously deflated by a blowpipe. Who's the likely suspect? <laughs> the lawyer at number 42, the little old lady over the road, or Michael, the crazed blowpipe expert who lives next door? <laughs> Still, here's Michael signing off and showing us that underneath that steely, sinister exterior, there's an even more steely, sinister interior. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you learned something from it. As I said when we started, the blowgun is a fascinating weapon. And I personally believe that it's well worth everyone's time and effort to learn more about it. If you're like me, the more time you spend with these things, the more you like them.